sense like God is. Hallelujah. Maybe seated, maybe seated. Let's go into teaching this morning. Um, the writing stars assembly, just to remind you, is configured around the revelation, the intentionality, and the expectation of people emerging, people rising, people becoming. Pay attention, pay attention. One of the primary responsibilities of leadership is to cast vision. That's the primary responsibility of leadership. Before modeling, before being a model, a leader has to have vision. A leader has to provide vision. Modeling becomes becoming an opportunity for people to see the vision you cast in your life. That's modeling. That's very important in leadership. A leader has to be a model. Has to be an embodiment of what is expected, of the culture, of the expectation, of the standard. But number one thing, a leader has to have vision. So you don't follow a man because you like a man. <laughs> I said, I like him. I follow him. It is just a psychological thing. You follow a man, a woman, on account of the vision that the person brings, that the person carries. And then secondly, at the secondary level, that he models. If he does not model the vision, is hypocritical, is duplicitous. It does not have integrity. It does not have what it takes. A leader does not have to be perfect, does not need perfection. But a leader just has to rise daily, fall daily, fight daily to stand for the ideals that he casts in a vision. He makes mistakes, but he rises in that direction. Everybody can see that this person is making effort to do what is shown. That's it. I don't know why I'm, I'm beginning on the note of leadership. It's just to let you know that there is a vision. The reason why on the very first day of the Rising Star Assembly, I was delirious. I, I was completely, you know, um, out of my mind. It was because it's, it's about the vision. So what's the vision? Get it right. So that you can follow me. Because if you don't understand the vision, you will waste your time. I cannot help you if you don't know what I bring, if you don't know what I represent. I have nothing to help you with, nothing. I am useless to you until you see the vision. Okay, so the vision of the Rising Stars Assembly is configured around the intentionality expectation of people rising everything is arranged so that people can emerge imagines imagine something in the ocean or in the water something is in the water but you don't see it but when that thing comes up it has emerged you can now see what is it so a lot of us are glorious and great but underneath in the oceans of life nobody can talk about you nobody knows who you are nobody knows what your star what the light of God what the, the name of God over in your life is about and because you are under you just, just you are under you are in the waters you are in the darkness you are in the woods you are in the forest when you come from the forest to the opening and to the open to the main road to where people can see you means you have emerged. That's how people can describe you, whether as short or tall, whether as this or that. So some of you sitting down here, nobody can describe you. There, is, there are no words to describe. This is a very honest fact about many of you. You are thinking marriage. A man cannot even describe you. So does not know what to think about you. Why? 
you have not emerged. And you are thinking, and you are thinking marriage, you are thinking wealth. Who will do business with you? You are without description. No words can describe you. You have not yet emerged. For young men, you just want to become very important one day, or political figure, or this and that and that, and, and have a wonderful... You, have you emerged? Are you out of the woods? Are you out of the thick forest of life? Are you, are you out of the waters? What can be the words with which to describe you? If somebody describes you, will you be different from Genesis chapter 1? Verse 2. If somebody describes you, will you be different from Genesis chapter 1? Do you want, me? you know me, I, 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 I'm addicted to Genesis chapter 1, right? You want to look at chapter verse 2? You want to look at it? It will not harm you, just look at it. If somebody is to describe you, will you be different from no form? Void. Do you know the meaning of void? It says some votes were void. <laughs> it doesn't count. Empty. It's useless. So some ballot papers are void. <laughs> Null and void. If somebody is to to describe you will somebody not use void this one in matters of marriage void in matters of business who ya or not don't put anything in the hands of this one void this is scary right it should scare you if it doesn't scare you I'm afraid that means you are not even alive <laughs> it should scare you Genesis chapter 1 and darkness was on the face on the face of the deep over the deep it means everything is not nothing is seen just think about it so you cannot wake up in the morning and be praying Lord bless me with money Lord bless me with a job if you are given a job what will you do with it do you exist do you have what it takes to add one upon another and make results if a man should be handed over to your life to be your husband and you are the wife, will that person be blessed or will that person's life be a curse because of you? If the best of women on the women on the best of women on earth, the very best, the very best woman on earth, best of women on earth, and a great queen that brings all the treasures into this world, handed over to your hand, just hand given to you in marriage. What will be the testimony of that person after three days, after one week? That's, those are the things. So the rising stars assembly is not necessarily, it's not, um, you know, something, um, some energy thing and some maybe convenience thing. I go to church early so that I can have the rest of the day to fool around. I'm sorry. By now, those of you who are regular, you should know I don't. My words, my words get better as I preach longer. But this early stage is usually like waking you up. So, tell somebody, wake up. Sincerely, wake up. One of my children wakes up first in the morning and is the youngest. And then when he wakes up, he goes to the switch of the light, puts it on. <laughs> Like put it on, how can I be awake if everybody is still asleep? Put it on and go to about waking everybody up and all of that. He's a youngest, but a timekeeper wakes up everybody and uh, can't understand why people should be sleeping at this time. So I think you should be, you should come to the point of waking yourself up. Don't go about waking people, you wake yourself up. Okay, having said that, I'm sure you now understand what the vision is about. So coming to this church daily, on a Sunday like this, in this particular service, the intention is to wake you up because until you can emerge, you cannot rise. When we talk about rising, it's ascendancy. Somebody is rising when he's in charge. He's in charge of a successful business. He's in charge of a successful ministry. In charge of a successful home and family. In charge of successful 
polity in church when we talk about Christians in leadership the only thing those who are in leadership bring to Christianity is just to gather people <laughs> he says he's a Christian leader he gathers people and people pray and I don't want to go into it so that I don't get confused this morning and it's so it's so insulting to the mind Because you don't even need to gather people in one assembly or one thing or the other to be a Christian. That's not your work. Face governance and make a mark and let people gather for you and pray for you. That's what we need to tell our leaders. The people are confusing. So being a leader means, being a Christian and you are a leader means you are a rising person and people rise on the wings of your rising. I'm not talking about those who may have opportunity to be in government or in politics. I'm, not, I'm talking about you because you are the future. I'm interested in the future, so I raise people for the future. I'm raising people who will be presidents, who will be governors, who will be, who will be leaders of companies, who will be captains of industry, those who will beget wealth. That's what Rising Stars Assembly is about. It's about people emerging and becoming. I don't care what Naira is to dollar. I am not interested in what the economic atmosphere and weather forecasting is about in terms of economy in Nigeria. It is waiting for somebody to rise. All this confusion is asking question, who is there? Who knows what? So this is an opportunity for the emergence of people. This is a time of the emergence. This challenging time, this difficult time is the great time. I just want to, I flip it the other way around because maybe you come and you think empathy is coming to tell you sorry. Things are so difficult in economy. Things are so difficult. The Lord will help us. Just stay alive. Don't kill yourself. Why should you kill yourself? Why should we even talk about that? This is an opportunity for industries. This is an opportunity for vision. To, this is an opportunity for managers, for leaders. This is an opportunity for great lifters. This is an opportunity for emergence. Why? It is, you, it is hopeless. This is a time for the emergence of those who carry hope. So this difficult time, this challenging time, is a great time for those who have something to show. When companies are going down, people look for who do we bring in as CEO that will change. When ministries are going down, churches in places like in the US, where churches hire ministers and pastors to come into the assembly. When churches are going down, people look, who, who as a minister do we bring into this place that will turn things around? So darkness is an opportunity for the light carrier you dare not sit down and think hopelessness like others. Think difference. Think change. Think. Think rising. This is, this is what I represent. This is what I represent. By the grace of God, I don't sit down in the company of those who grumble and complain. If I did, I would stay put in the Catholic priesthood. It was comfortable. Has so many people every time you meet them till now when I call them on phone, they have nothing to tell me other than complaining, complaining, complaining. That is it. I don't complain. I change things. Because God trusts me. God died to give me his life. He didn't give me his life to sit down and play victim. I'm planning to die with those who are planning to die or those who are dying. And I don't have value for burial. I'm interested in somebody who wants to rise. I'm interested in somebody who wants to rise. Who's in somebody who wants to run. I'm interested in somebody who's going somewhere. I can give the last that I have to somewhere, somebody who knows where he's going to. And he's paying the price to go there. 
and I don't have time to spare for a dying person who does not have reason to live and wants to waste my time for with burial. Some burial is not about doing honor to the dead. It's wasting time. Some people should not take people's time. They should be buried in the night when people are asleep and let people wake up in the morning and go continue with life. And you dare not say, I'm not, I'm not sensible. I am. Live a life that the day burial will come for you, people will be happy to cancel all their events to be there because you, you meant something. Don't just die. If you, if you die without emergence, why shouldn't you be dead, buried in the night? Were well, you not living in the night? Why am I angry this morning? I'm angry because this thing, you don't, you don't get it. Ask somebody, do you get it? And what is the person saying? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. I just come and first of all get angry with you. And you take something and let this anger be in your bone. Walk away today. And if somebody wants to gossip about nonsense, tell somebody, I don't have time. I'm thinking about something serious. How to emerge and make a difference in this hopeless time. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 24. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 24. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. The church of what? Firstborn. So last week we talked about that the true meaning of church is the assemblage of the firstborn. The true meaning of church is the commonwealth, the economy, the company, the administration, the ecosystem, the space that everyone is a firstborn. And when we talk about firstborn, I warned you last week, as I warned you this week, you dare not think about your biological position in the place, in your family. It's accident. That one is called accident. Those of you fight with your elder brother or fight with your younger brother and fight over your, body, your father's property. <laughs> I hope there is no unfortunate person who sits here and is angry with somebody over your father's property. Your father's property is not your own. Get your own properties. So firstborn, according to the scripture... I brought about seven people. You can have up to a hundred people that would define born, firstborn. But these seven people, I mean seven dimensions and seven words should give you insight into the meaning of the word firstborn. So when the scripture says, you are, wel you are welcome to the general assembly. I love the word general assembly. In the United Nations, there is general assembly, but there is also security council. That one is exclusive connection of those who matter among others the elites elites God gave me a vision about partnership in Abuja in 2012 that's 12 years ago till now I've not yet implemented it because people around me have not yet grown to that understanding and level. It will stay for as long as it takes for people around me to mature into it. And I'm not permitted to even mention it. Every year on that day, my calendar will remind me anniversary. So I have had 12 anniversaries of that vision. Every vision is for an appointed time. And while you wait for the time, you grow people for the vision. So when we get to that point... I will talk about a vision of partnership that was given as a gift from heaven. So the church, general assembly. So at a very general level, this is what the scripture is talking about. At the very general level, what is open to everyone who is a member of the body of Christ, the church, is being firstborn. So it's not something for general overseers for pastors for prophets for prayer warriors at the very general the scripture is talking about general assembly look at that scripture 
welcome to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. So church is about the general, you know, the firstborn experience as a status, as inheritance, as the plan of God for you is at a general level. It means once you are born of God in Christ Jesus and have come to the place of being taught and being mentored and you taught, educated and raised in the word of God, fed in the word of God at that stage without any, or any need for ordination or title or anything, you are expected to enjoy the rights of the firstborn. So some, some church or ministries or preachers can make it feel like, you know, you, know, you, need, to be, you need to be old up to 20, 30 years. Do you know how long it has taken me to get here? Do I know why it took you that long? So must I, must I go through that same length of time? At the gener say general, at the general level, very general level you are expected to live in the place of the firstborn and let's remind ourselves let's remind ourselves of the seven things about the firstborn which is available at a very general level to every believer come on say come on it is for common christians so if this does not apply to you or you don't have an understanding of it or it's not a burden in your heart, it's not a vision you have, you are not yet Christian in any sense. You cannot be referred to as a Christian. That means you need to become a Christian, first of all. These are things you cannot joke with. So you first of all find out. Because to be in the church where Christianity is the life. The life of Christ is given to us and we are taught and raised and discipled to live the life of Christ, to live the, 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 the office of the Christ on earth. This is commonly available to you. Firstborn, it means prominence. Do you remember? Prominence. What is the next thing? Pre-eminence. What is another thing? Excellence. The next one is Priority. Means somebody has you in connection, in relationship. You prioritize that person above others. That somebody puts you above every other one. Because you are a Christian. And somebody puts you above every other one because he sleeps with you. Is that Christianity? Because you smoke together. Because you do some stupid things together. And so the person prefers you to others. Priorities are as a result of excellence, prominence, preeminence, superiority, advantage, and above. These are the indications, the characteristics of a common Christian. Write it down today. These are the characteristics of a common Christian. The characteristics of a common Christian. Please write it down. And make it your word. The characteristics of a common Christian. Go and study these words. If last, word, last week you heard these words. And it meant nothing to you. And this week you have come out. Who are you? Where are you going to? What, what do you represent? What makes you different from a stone, a piece of stone in the neighborhood that lies there cannot change itself? Somebody says the, the, the extraordinariness of human beings above every other beings is the ability and the possibility of a, a human being reinventing himself. Growth. You watch... You watch chimpanzees, they can use tools. They have leaders. They have warriors. They have all sorts of things. But they cannot grow themselves. Some of the things, that, I'm not quoting that person. I'm not very good at keeping somebody's word. 
verbatim in my mind. I, but I have a sense of it. So this is like paraphrasing. That the greatness and extraordinariness of a human being, I'm not talking about Christian, of a human being, is that we can grow ourselves. So that if you lie down this way and it hurts you, you can change your sleeping position. That's the extraordinariness of being a Christian. So I saw of being a, 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 being a human at a very basic level, human. So it's an exciting thing to be a human. You can be an architect and wake up one day and start working to be an engineer. That's what is available to humans. And if it scares you, there is a young woman in this place, one, the day she will wait, because I have a plan, I, I have an understanding she's in a process of getting married. The day she went, I will celebrate. The parents will be so surprised the way I will celebrate her. I've been celebrating her mentally in my spirit. She's one of the greatest people I have in this place. And you will not know why. And it's nothing that could make sense to somebody. The fact of somebody going in a particular direction, you know, like most of us went through school in secondary school we, we cheated in examination because it's a normal thing in some places whether you want to cheat or not is put upon, it's a system so if you don't cheat it's like you must cheat you pay money whether you will cheat or not just pay money even if you didn't pay money now that money has been paid we don't even need your money, cheat take this one and write, whether it's correct or not. Sometimes fools are the ones who are called to come and write these things. And they write and everybody has it upside down. The upside down. So she cheated, had a result and went into the university. And at some moments she realized, is this the life I want to live? If I have a certificate in where I'm going to, will I call it my certificate? And make 180 degrees turn, you a turn left the university, went back to secondary school to take work and brought her in serious conflict with the, with the parents. They felt you, have, you, are the, the most, you are the most shameful thing that could ever happen. It was in that condition I met her in Ibom Hall. I'm not close to her. She doesn't, she has never, she doesn't know my number. I've never talked to her before. We can stay one year, we don't talk. But she's one of the most valuable people in my circle. I value her with reverence. I stood by her. She went through so much depressed, crying every day. I told her, you are one of the greatest I've ever seen. Keep walking. She's now currently in the university. She had to go through all of that, face all sorts of things. Went back to the university to reach something else. She has discovered purpose. And she has perhaps a little job that is keeping her going. I said, the last time I asked her, how are your parents thinking about it? I think their opinions are beginning to change. She had to prove I'm going to somewhere. I took that same decision. I had to cheat in a secondary school in a one where I went to. But when I met Christ, I sat down and said, how can this represent me? So I went back to secondary school, studied maths. Studied English, a youth copper will make me write compos composition. I map every Sunday like this. I will go and meet him in a naval base in Dockyard Road in our papa. And he will correct me very basic things in English. And he will give me assignment to go write. I read newspaper. That's how I knew people like Ruben Abati, one of the best who used to write on Pania. I was addicted to write, reading Pania listening to BBC. I had to look for everything possible. Went back to Sony School, made all the papers, made jam. I didn't go to the university. I went to a seminary. The certificate that represents me is the one that I worked for. So when I meet another girl who will go a step forward, a step further, she was already in the university, second year or third year, and walked away in order to start all over. I've met two people like that, but she's the one in my circle. How will I not reverse such a person? 
That is what it means to be human. That you can change. Tell somebody you can change. So humanity, hopelessness is very far in the horizon of humanity. This is the challenge of being alive that I can reinvent myself. I used to be a Catholic priest. I am intentional. I'm aware I'm married. And somebody calls me husband. And there are children who just love me for being daddy and, and just take my words as the only currency on earth. It's not arbitrary. It's not accidental. It is not good luck. It's the power of intentionality. That's what we have been talking about. So becoming preeminent. Give me that on the screen. All those stuffs about the firstborn. Becoming prominent, preeminent, excellent, having priority and superiority and advantage and being above. It's not fasting and prayer. It's not who your father is. It's not who your mother is. It's not which continent you operate in. It's not whether you have left Nigeria and now you are in Europe or you are in Canada. People are crazy about it. going to Canada. There are people in prison in Canada and rehabilitation centers in Canada. I know one of the most prominent names in the gospel space in Nigeria. And the first child of that person, the person does not talk about that person. And I will not dare even give details because this is something that is so deep to somebody that I know does not talk about it. The person lives in, as at the last time I knew, the first child of that person lives in one of the greatest cities in the world. But lives in a rehabilitation center. It takes intentionality to shine the light of the firstborn. What is intentionality? That you want to. That being a child of God gives you these great gifts of the firstborn. Prominence, preeminence, excellence, priority, superiority, advantage, and above. And that I cannot let this work at the level of chance. I want to be prominent. Because that is what I am made for. I want to. Want to. So intentionality is not wish. Intentionality is want. Oh, I wish I could. Um, wish, um, wishes are not horses. When you say, I want to. I want to means you can fight somebody. I want it. Not I wish. I wish he's so polite and fireless. Fireless means he doesn't, I wish, I wish I could. No, I want. Say, I want. You are not even angry. Be angry saying, I want. I want. If you want to fail, you will fail. People don't fail by wishes. They fail by wanting to fail. People don't become preeminent and prominent and live the life of superiority above things and enjoy priority by wishing, by desiring. Everybody desires something that is beautiful, but only those who want, I want to means, I wake up. This morning, I, I prayed spent my statutory time with God and I needed to catch up to sleep I need sleep to be able to function the whole day and be in church and go back strong to meet the family so I slept but not enough I woke up at the time I should wake up and everything told me why don't you add another one hour or so it will still be okay but I knew there are other things lined up for me to do in preparation to come and stand here so I wanted to be up. I got myself up. And the, my sleepy eyes had to cooperate with what I wanted. Turn on the lights. Did this and did that and did that. And after that, 
Every iota of sleep in my eye disappeared. Look at my eye. Do I look sleepy? Because I wanted. When you want, you engage. When you want, you fight. Write it down, sir. When you want, you engage. When you want, you fight. When you want, you pay the price. When you want, you endure nonsense. When you want, you accept insult. Why do, you allow, why do I allow somebody to insult me? Because I want. I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. I had a conversation with a Catholic priest. Father Julius was here during our anniversary. And we were talking about another person that we both know. <laughs> it's a, this thing. As a Catholic priest, there is, you are trained in such a way that you cannot afford to go through certain things in life. Certain insults you cannot bring yourself to accept. Because a Catholic priest is raised aristocratic. You are made to think and feel superior. In your mind, I, how do I know? I went through the entire process and I became a priest for more than a decade. <laughs> so I know it. That's how you are trained. There are certain things you cannot afford to take. There are certain things in life you cannot afford to accept. So, to be able to come out and do what I do now, you must die to that and reinvent yourself. Means be willing to take to be insulted, to be rejected, to be abused, and you carry your face like the abuse means nothing. Why do you take it? Because you want to. That's how it works. I know it because I am it. Not telling you what I read in books. I'm telling you who I am. Want to be somebody's husband. So I constantly fight against every information and knowledge and understanding and disposition. And I've been contrary to it. I want to be father. So I fight against everything on earth daily. And I take everything I shouldn't take daily. Why? I want to be a father to children that when they grow up in the later years of their life, they will say, I'm so privileged to have been raised by a father. And if this is what Catholic priests would give to him to give me this kind of life as a father, then every, every father should first of all be a Catholic priest. I want to raise such children. Therefore, I take everything that I shouldn't take. I hold back nothing. That our life will want me to hold. Sir, this is how prominence, preeminence, excellence, priority, superiority, advantage, and above. This is how it works. Nobody gives it to you. It's already yours, but you must take it by storm. From the time of John the Baptist till now, what does the kingdom of God suffer? So when we talk about intentionality, intentionality is what you want. So, what, what is it? When last did you hear a word and you wanted to apply it so much that you could not wait and you started applying it and it has affected your life? When last? That's how we know. Whether you are a believer, so we see a lot of, a lot of Christians, they speak in tongues and see vision, but their life is useless. They cannot inspire a child. Their children are not proud of them. How many children of pastors are proud of their parents? There are very few children. There are very few pastors, ministers, that children are proud of them. Proud to be their children. How many children of visioners, those who prophesy and heal the sick? Apart from the crowd, how many are, how many are, are children are really proud in their heart 
and want to live that life some they don't just believe in these things because the person was they was not interested in wanting to be their father being a father is not being a visioner you can be a visioner and a hopeless man a hopeless husband a hopeless wife so i saw a young man that i've known in the catholic church saw him he's rising in his career i asked him when are you going to marry are you married no why are you going to marry i'm waiting he said i have this person i want to marry he's a minister has a minister of her own. He's a mighty, he's a visioner. I say, ah, you want to marry somebody who has a minister, a visioner. What is the interest there? Who told you because somebody is a visioner? A prayer, prayer warrior. Holy Ghost bulldozer. <laughs> that that is. And this, this person is not even interested in marrying you. But that's what you want to marry. Who even told you? Is it God that told you? <laughs> we don't leave somebody to just keep on seeing vision. And if God tells you that vision is your own, you say, God, please help me in this business. And you say, I want, because the person is a spiritual person. I want a spiritual person. Who told you the best wife is a very spiritual person? Just be a Christian, that's all. And be a Christian as prominence, preeminence, excellence, priority, superiority, advantage, and above. That is enough. Am I communicating? And that is common to everyone in the general assembly. So you don't need to be waking up in the morning and seeing the colors of people's underwears and their phone numbers. And say, I want to marry you. So let's do accountability. Let's do accountability. When last did you do something intentionally to achieve these th seven words? Write it down. When last did I do something, anything I did intentionally? As I did it, I did it intentionally to achieve in that thing prominence. To achieve in that thing I was doing preeminence. To achieve in that thing I was doing excellence. To achieve in that thing I was doing superiority, priority, advantage, and above. When last? Let's talk about even the way you clean your house, the way you clean your floor. As somebody shopkeeper, the, when you went to open the shop, the first lady shared with me, they go to do shopping for people's children, for children's stuff and all of that. So we share stories. That you go into a shop and you meet somebody. You say, oh, this dress should fit my daughter. And the person asks, how old is your daughter? He say, my daughter is three years going to four. He said, drop it, it will not fit your daughter. He said, no, but I think, he said, drop it, I am the shopkeeper here, it will not fit your daughter. He said, but why can't my daughter just try to... He said, is there anything wrong in trying to check out the size? He said, drop it, I am the one telling you. <laughs> What's the translation in English? Something fast. <laughs> oh my goodness. How you fight with a customer? He said, okay, bring out your three-year-old or your four-year-old. Sweetheart, put it on. Let's see. Even things in packs usually is unwrapped carefully. Say, test it. After that, we wrap it back. But look at somebody who is sitting in front of somebody's business and somebody's comfortable sleeping at home that I have a shopkeeper. Somebody talked about some member of Grace Family the other time who goes to the office, who, do, who goes to where the person is employed and spends the whole day reading Bible. I have never talked about it. I didn't know how to talk about it. He says, he says, he's in a ministry team in Grace Family and he just comes there. He just spends time reading the Bible all through. That's all the person does. And my blood, did it go up or go down? I don't know. Because the question is that, what do you teach that person? Other people here, 
The power of little, little things. Have you heard that as ministers? People are writing books. People are running businesses from that teaching. Taking responsibility and increasing. But somebody goes to sit down in a place where you are supposed to watch for somebody reading the Bible from the beginning till the end. That's what you do to show that you are in grace family. You are not. <laughs> it's not true. It's not in the grace family that I am also, I am also in grace family. I know this one. I don't need to be a minister to this. I know it. <laughs> I am one of the first few people in grace family. I know it. It's not true. So when last did you do something intentionally intentionally to achieve the blessings of the firstborn? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with what? When, so when you hear of every spiritual blessing he has blessed us with preeminence he has blessed us with prominence. He has blessed us with priority and superiority. He has blessed us with excellence, with advantage. He has blessed us above others. That's it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with these sevenfold and plus into their hundreds. In the heavenly places. Things that are in the heavenly places. Just guys like said, let it be done on earth. As it is where? Yeah. So this blessing, the preeminence. All of these things are in the heavenly places. There must be a system on earth that will bring them to become the life you live on earth. And it is because you want to. It's not because you have to. When you hear the word you have to, it is the language of force. And pressure. Can I tell you something? We don't do well in force and pressure. Nobody. We hate to be under to be under somebody's forceful power. We feel like we are slaves. So you go to the university, you are forced to cram things, you cram it into exam and vomit. Ah! After that, somebody asks you, say, Was it taught? Because there are some iron fisted men and women who came to classroom and just told you, just go to that place. I had a teacher like that. I, I forgot, I forget his name and I'm so happy to forget his name. His first name is Jude. God forbid that I remember his last name. I had a great experience in education so far in the seminary until he taught me. And he taught me about the simplest of things in the early days of philosophy. There was nothing. And I love creativity. What made me, what, what, I, what made me that you write for people and people just want to bless you more is that you are creative. It's like you are ingenious. You just love to make this beautiful. And the person gave me 40. 40 was past my. I had 40 in three courses. I will not forget them. And I remember them, their faces. <laughs> One is a white man and the only reason is that my handwriting was poor. So he will not even read. He gives me 40 to let me go. And he does not know where I went to school. <laughs> he does not know. <laughs> if he asked me, I would tell him it was a miracle that I could write. And the other person is from I don't want to mention his name. That one, I don't want to talk about it. And they are very simple things. And this other man, and the only thing for this test, let's talk about the man I wanted to talk about. He said it, just go to that place if I ask you a question. Just go to that place. Not a paragraph before, not a paragraph after. Just take it like that and put it. Like and I just felt like, is this what I've been wasting my time in this class? <laughs> Very annoying. Which is what makes it exam. The exam is just to test you. And many things are tested. Just that I don't like it. At the end of it, I don't remember anything about that course. There are things in my spirit from the 80s, sir. From 84, 85. 
I know that division or I, I know that the opportunity cost is forgone alternative. Have you heard it? I know of, uh, of division of labor and all of those things. 85, many of you were not bought because the teacher made me want to learn. Made me want to. So you prosper in what you want to and you fail in what you have to. So intentionality is not that you must do it. Intentionality is that I want to do it for this reason. For this reason. That's why you see so many Christians and they walk the earth like animals. I'm sorry to use those words. And they say, when I go to heaven, my reward is in heaven. They, they don't make any mark. They don't know they represent the greatest one. To be a Christian is that you represent the greatest personality, God. And you cannot represent. The one who represents Tinubu in America is, is a powerful person. People don't treat you anyhow. They value you because of where you come from. People are called brand ambassadors. It means you represent that brand. And when people do things that are below expectation, the brand will come and say, from today we no longer have relationship with this person. So people respect their brand. That's how Adidas and a young man in the U.S. called I think yes, the next is is uh, what is his name? Thank God. So God is the greatest brand. He is the God of prominence, of preeminence, of excellence, of priority, superiority above all. Advantage in everything above all, no one is in his class, and on earth, in his image and likeness, you are supposed to represent him and make mark in every area, wherever you are found. You make mark, and people met you and met God representative. And that's not something that happens that because you have to, it is because you want to. Say, I want to. What do you want to? Want to be, want to live the life, enjoy the blessing of the firstborn. And the secret of, did I, have you answered, have you, have you written down the question? What is the question? When last did you do something and intentionally to have priority? To enjoy superiority, advantage, excellence, preeminence, prominence. Please, please answer this question. Before you do anything, if you make dresses, and somebody tells you do this for me, you sit down and have meditation and speak to yourself. I am prominent. I will make this dress prominently. I am preeminent. I'm going to make this dress as a, as a preeminent artwork. I represent God. And the scriptures say we are the workmanship of God. It means it is when people see us, they'll be able to see the excellence of God. Sir, being a Christian unintentionally is being a blasphemy. Blasphemy is speaking evil against God. We believers who walk around speaking evil against God because when people look at us, they doubt if God is glorious because there's nothing glorious about us. They doubt if God is preeminent, if God is what God is. It, but you are, the, you are the artwork of God. You are the workmanship of God. Can you rise to your feet? Say, I emerge. Speak it intentionally. Say, I emerge into God's firstborn status. I match into preeminence because I want to. I I match into pre into prominence. I want to. I didn't hear you. I match into excellence. I want to. 
I met into priority. I want to. I met into superiority. I want to. I met into advantage. I want to. I met into above. That is what I want to. That is what I want in my life. Lift up your hands, say in the name of Jesus. Anything and anybody in my life living contrary to this firstborn status and blessings are released from my life. So, Lord, take from me anything, anybody, lifestyle, habits, disposition, attitude, spirits, relationship. That is contrary to the firstborn status. So Lord, I want to. Amen. Does it make sense? Be seated. And we have shared that the whole issue, the whole issue about this firstborn, why this firstborn thing is about excellence, is about prominence, is about preeminence. It's not about what you do. It's about the plan of God, what God has done. Exodus 22 Verse 29, you shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe produce and your juices. We saw this last week. You shall not delay. The firstborn of your sons shall, you shall do what? Give to me. They belong to me. This is, this is God's fascination with the church. So the church, God wanted in the world a system an economy, a kingdom where everyone will belong to him and everyone who belongs to him on earth is firstborn. This is the whole issue about creation of man. Let us make man in our image and what? And likeness. Let them have what? Dominion is let them be above others. Let them be preeminent among others. Let them be prominent above others. Let them draw and just superiority compared to others. Let them walk in priority. I prefer them. And let them live the life that would make them preferred ones. Because they are our image and what? Likeness. So when you hear the word, let them have dominion. For you, it's just dominion, dominion. Dominion means all of the, all of the blessings of the firstborn. So dominion life is a firstborn life. Write it down. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Is God teaching you something this morning? Come on. This is why I need you in church. I can't wait to have come for the Rising Stars Assembly. Like one week come. That from Monday, we, we, we are going, Dr. Edwards. Get all your leaders. You are a very busy man. And I love you because you like to do things. Sincerely. You are a very busy man, but you like to do things. Yeah. I saw you creating football match. Football match and a volleyball thing. And, and you come and jump and play everything. But you felt so disappointed because on the last day, people didn't come out. And I watched your face. I said, Pele. <laughs> That's what it means to be a leader. You take all of that nonsense because you want to. Well, don't be discouraged. Try it next time. Try it next time. So we should begin to plan annual camp for the Rising Stars Assembly. Just, just, just know that we can plan ahead that one week from Monday to Sunday, people can take their vacation ahead and plan ahead. Know that people come out morning, afternoon, evening. Morning, afternoon, evening. And just come hear revelation and pray through. That one is not a general church thing. I don't believe in this general church thing. I come in and go for a person, go for a person. I just don't like church as church. I just like a movement. I, I like commitment. Let's go, we go. Let's jump, we jump. Why? We want to. Because we want to be prominent. Can we think about, now I've given you two assignments. Last week I talked about designing shit. I don't forget to. Okay, let's be seated. Praise God. I say praise God. Oh. Praise God. I still have time. Still have time to teach. 
So this whole thing is because God is involved. Say, say God is involved. So Adam was made the firstborn of God in status. Firstborn in dominion. Firstborn in dominion. And Jesus Christ is the firstborn. And the reason why the scripture talks about the first Adam and the last Adam. So the last Adam is the perfection of the mystery of the firstborn that Adam was given. The mystery of dominion. The mystery of having superiority such that the devil had to beg. The devil did not touch Adam, did not put pressure on Adam. The devil did not be, the devil just spoke. And Adam wanted to, if wanted to. They didn't have to, but they wanted to. The scripture says, when Eve saw that the fruit was beautiful, desirous, and, and, the, and good to become like God, and uh, uh, desiring to the eyes, and uh, sweet to the eyes, said, okay, let me eat. I want to eat it, and he lost it. Or she lost it. And Adam lost it. But the devil did not send warriors to beat Adam and Eve. Bind them and bring them here. I command you, you must reject God. No. Why? Adam was superior. Eve was excellent. When you meet superior people, you are courteous. You speak respectfully. Am I communicating? You don't speak nonsense. You don't talk to them like they are your mate. So if you look at Genesis chapter 3, the serpent did not insult. The serpent did not speak in language on becoming of the firstborn, of the one in dominion. He spoke respectfully until they wanted to. And once, once they wanted to leave God, they left God. It is what they wanted. So Jesus Christ came. When we talk about Jesus, he's the last Adam. The same dominion experience. The same firstborn status. The same preeminence. The same prominence. The same advantage, priority, superiority, excellence. The same above. He said the one from above is above all. He is the firstborn. Matthew chapter 1 verse 24 and 25. Verses 24, 25. Then Joseph being aroused from sleep did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took him to his wife and took and took to him his wife and did not know her until she had brought forth what? Now, why does the scripture say her firstborn? Why? Because her firstborn had to be God's born. Firstborn. Because for God to have preeminence on earth, preeminence on earth, the one that will be on earth must be man. That's why Jesus had to be the firstborn of Mary. But came as the firstborn of God. Firstborn of Mary so that she will be firstborn both among men and among the spirits. You don't, you don't understand that. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. That one may be a little bit difficult for you to crack. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Let's, we are still looking at Jesus as the firstborn. Because we are born in the nature of God, in the order of Jesus as the son of God. And you are born as firstborn to enjoy the priority, the pre superiority, the preeminence, the prominence, the excellence, the advantage, and the above status of Jesus, the firstborn. He is the image of the invisible God. Continue. Now we have seen firstborn at a second level. In Matthew, he is the firstborn of a woman. The firstborn of man. The firstborn at a human level. In Colossians, is the firstborn at creation level. He's above in the community of men. He's above in the creation at whatever it is. Is it mountain? Is it principality? Lucifer is creation. Satan, principalities, they are all created. They didn't make themselves. So he's the firstborn among them. He's the first, he's the one who enjoys superiority over Satan. He enjoys preeminence over Lucifer. He enjoys prominence over principalities and power. When you mention his name, every knee shall bow. Why? He enjoys priority, pre, uh, 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 superiority. Am I coming? Am I, am I, am I communicating? I don't, I don't know. Am I communicating? He's the firstborn over all what? All creation. 
the first one. So everything that has been created by God is above them all. Is above everyone conceived by a woman, the firstborn of a woman. Is above everything created. That means in the community of men is Jesus above all. In the community of created things, spirit and physical, spirit, supernatural, natural is the firstborn. It means when you go to creation, when you talk to mountain, when there are things in the mountainous places and you call the name of Jesus, they bow. Why? Is the firstborn of all creation. Oh my goodness. You're not following me. And I don't have time to wake you up. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. Say, I'm alive. Shout it louder. Say, I'm alive. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Look at another level. So when death is involved, he enjoys priority. Preeminence. It means because of him, you can cheat death. Because of him, death can be set aside. That is why in John's gospel, he would stand. He would delay till Lazarus had died and had been buried. He wanted to show that he was firstborn from the dead. <laughs> Praise God! After Lazarus had completely died like death. He said, Lazarus, come forth! There are those who are above death here. Yeah. Those who are superior to death here. By that time, he had not yet died. But he demonstrated so that when you are, when by his death and resurrection, you are born again, you can speak to your Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth! I am firstborn in the economy of the firstborn of God. We enjoy superiority over creation and over death. So you can deny death from stealing from you. You can deny hell from keeping yours. You can deny darkness. And death can no longer mess around with you. When something says, I will kill you. Say, I am born in the order of the firstborn from the dead. I am born in the superiority, in the priority, in the prominence and the preeminence of the one who sits above death. He said, on this mountain, I will swallow death. Death shall be swallowed. He said, death, where is your sting? He said, the sting of death has been broken because the secret of death has been seen. And thanks be to God who has given us victory in Christ. For he died the death of my sin. And because of that I am born. In the prominence above death. In the prominence above sin. In the prominence. So sin can knock me down. But refuse to keep me down. The devil can box me down. And refuse to keep me down. Why? If I fall I will rise. So my enemies do not gloat over me. Do not laugh and celebrate over me. Why, if I fall, I will rise. Why, it was impossible for death to hold him captive. And if death could not hold the firstborn captive, I am born firstborn in the firstborn. Death will not hold me captive. Rise to your feet. Say, you death, you will not hold me captive. You hell, you will not hold me captive. Your shame. Speak in the hollow. Rise to your feet and speak. Call that name Jesus. Say sin will not hold me captive. He is the creation. He is the firstborn of all creation. Over all creation. He is the firstborn of the dead. From the dead. He is the firstborn of the woman. He is the firstborn of man. And he is the firstborn of God. All firstborn belong to him. Say, I am welcome in the general assembly where everyone is a firstborn. Say, in Christ, priority is my native tongue. Excellence is my family spirit. My familiar spirit. My familiar spirit is excellence. My familiar spirit is prominence. I am intentional. I am absolutely intentional. It is not by accident. It is by want. I want to. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Glory to God. 
My hallelujah belongs to you. Halaboshita. My hallelujah belongs My hallelujah My hallelujah belongs You deserve You deserve You deserve You deserve My hallelujah belongs Can you just lift up your two hands and close your eyes? I'm asking you, come and make sons and daughters, firstborn from this flesh and blood, in the name of Jesus. Can you just lift up your two hands and make consecration and dedication of yours? You may have been born again 20 years ago, but you now know you are not a Christian except you are in this place of dominion, in this place of preeminence, prominence, priority, advantage. Say, Lord, I want, I want to belong to you prominently, preeminently, excellent. I want to belong to you, the order of Dominic. As somebody who has never submitted to Jesus, will you just turn your heart, say, Lord, I surrender my will to you. I repent of sin, I repent of darkness, repent of every association and action. outside the sphere of your righteousness and holiness. Say, so Lord, I return my will from rebellion. I no longer use my will and my want to fight against your word. So I submit to you. As a child of God, can you rededicate yourself? Say, so Lord, I want to manifest you prominently, preeminently. I want to manifest you. I want to manifest you. Please, Lord, I want to manifest you. Say, so, Lord, send the Spirit, the Holy Ghost upon me. Can you just lay your right hand on your forehead and the other one on your chest? Say, so, take over this heart. Take over this mind. Take over this spirit. Take over this vessel. Lord, I want you. I want you. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Do what you want. You don't need to sing, just speak. Just say, Holy Spirit, please fill me. The Spirit of the first one. The Spirit of Jesus. The Spirit of Jesus. Say, the Spirit of Jesus, please come. The spirit of the firstborn, please come. Halabo on the yata. Siando prele masikatola. The spirit of excellence, the spirit of prominence. Katala masi pro la sholik. La masiando pre kato. La si katola. Shonde ke prele masikato. Le manda to masi pra. La te masia. Lo feel these hearts. Feel this soul. Any sickness in this place, I come against you, sickness. I come against you, stronghold of sin, the stronghold of lust, the stronghold of addiction. I break you in this place. I break addiction. I break addiction to lust. I break addiction to drugs. I break addiction to pornography. I 
break every form of addiction in this place. I break every form of addiction. Addiction to food. Addiction to substance. I break limits and yokes. I break sickness. I break open the womb that has been closed. No one is barren. I break the yoke. Whatever is binding your womb, whether it's hormones, whether it's ceased, whatever it is, whether it's growth or nature or spiritual, I break the yoke. I command your womb by the name of Jesus. Bear children. I command sperm counts. Be boosted. Ah, sperm discourse Come alive, come alive in health. I speak blood pressure, be normalized. Blood sugar, be normalized. I speak restoration in your kidney, in your liver. Whatever is the name of the sickness, as you lay your hand there, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. You foul spirit of diseases and sickness. Leave now and go to the abyss and never come back. In the name of Jesus, I command healing in your body. Thank you, Father. Lord, fill this song with your spirit. Let there be encounters. Holy Spirit, please take over. Say, take over. Speak it gently. Say, Holy Ghost, take over. Say, take over. I cannot do it without it. Say, I want to. I want to. But I need your help. Holy Ghost, take over. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ.